Ladies and gentlemen, for the final presentation, we will be hearing from Mr. Timothy Tai. Mr. Timothy Tai is a digital content creator and author of Penang Travel Tips. Established in 2003, the website provides comprehensive information about Penang, Malaysia and Singapore. With its 20th year milestone, Penang Travel Tips has become one of the country's largest platforms for place information. Passionate about preserving Penang Hokkien, Mr. Tai developed a modern writing system called Tai Ji Romanization. He created the first online dictionary for Penang Hokkien, featuring over 6,000 words and supporting multiple writing systems. To facilitate learning, he established the Learn Penang Hokkien YouTube channel, offering free educational resources. In 2018, Timothy co-founded Anak Pinang, supporting courses like the Penang Transport Master Plan. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, he launched Sojimart, a Facebook-based marketplace that provided income opportunities and marketing expertise for many. As a well-known Facebook influencer, food reviewer, and advocate for social causes, Mr. Tai aims to redefine the perception of Penang Hokkien and promote its recognition in the modern world. Ladies and gentlemen, the warmest welcome for the man of the hour, Mr. Timothy Tai. Thank you very much. I want to tell you I'm so very grateful to see all of you here gathered today for my day. I'm very, very touched and I, as I listen to everybody, all the presenters presenting today, we all have one thing in common, something that holds us together, whether we are talking about Hokkien heritage, whether you are talking about Nyonya cooking, or kebaya, or Hokkien migration, the one gel that holds us all together is the language. And this is the thing which we want to preserve, and this is the reason why I'm here today. So, my name is Timothy Tai. Uh, my mother tongue is Penang Hokkien. So, it's the first language that I learned. For the first maybe six years of my life, it was Penang Hokkien. And I do remember that when I was young, I resisted learning English. I do not want to learn English. So when we went to kindergarten, oh, I have to learn English. I do not want to learn English because Penang Hokkien is home. It feels like this is home. It has the intimacy of being at home. Even though it is strange that why is our language always putting like second place to every other, other people's language? And it never does get much recognition, but Penang Hokkien is our home. When I was 10 years old, when I was 10 years old, I discovered that my father is Taishanese. Taishanese? Oh, I'm, in other words, my father is not Hokkien. My father is not Hokkien. But what happened? When the first time I heard that my father is Taishanese, that's also the first time that I've ever heard the name Taishanese or Sing Ning Lang. Hmm? Sing Ning Lang. However, he doesn't speak a word of Taishanese, and neither do I. To us, our language at home is Penang Hokkien. And very soon, I discovered that I'm not alone there. I have friends who are Teochew, friends who are Hakka, who are Hainanese, who are Cantonese, and they all embrace Penang Hokkien as their language. And so I realized that Penang Hokkien belongs not just to those who are 100% Hokkien, 
but rather it belongs to all of us. And when I go to the market, I, I meet up with people who are Indians, who are Malay. Just, just last week, I went to the Bayambaru market and I saw that there's a Malay seller and he was speaking in fluent Penang Hokkien. And so I realized that this language does not, is not limited to the Hokkien people. Yes, my mother tongue is Hokkien, my mother is Hokkien, but my father is Taishanese. Nevertheless, this language is our language. And it is the language that belongs to all of you. If you happen to be tai Taiwanese, if you happen to be Cantonese, and so on. But if you live in Penang and you're raised in Penang and you speak Penang Hokkien, do not ever let people tell you that this is not your language. This is the language that we have from the very beginning of Penang. Why do we speak Penang Hokkien? Well, uh, Dr. Wong has already explained to us the history of Hokkien migration. But, uh, in a nutshell, we speak Penang Hokkien, we speak Hokkien in particular, because it's the first language that arrived for the Chinese. It's the first language that arrived for the Chinese. And I'm sure many of you, many of you who have been to maybe other parts of Malaysia would realize that there are more than one type of Hokkien. We speak a specific type of Hokkien, but there is more than one type of Hokkien. And as we arrive at this point in time, from when I was small and now here I am, a lot of things has changed. When I was small, people used typewriter. Now we use Facebook, we use WhatsApp and so on. So the society has changed. But what has happened to Penang Hokkien? Penang Hokkien is today like a patient on ICU. And a lot of us are aware that Penang Hokkien has become like a patient on ICU. We are aware that we must do something to save this language. We have to do something. And what I discovered is that, unfortunately, most of us have a very, very basic knowledge of Penang Hokkien. We don't even know the history of the language. Why do we speak this language? Where does it come from? Why is our Hokkien different from the Hokkien spoken in Klang or in Singapore? And I realized that if we are going to save this language, we have to know everything. And if nobody else knows it, then I myself need to become the subject matter expert in Penang Hokkien. I know I am not fluent in Penang Hokkien, and to this day I can say that I don't speak pure Hokkien. But it doesn't matter that you do not speak pure Hokkien. Penang Hokkien is not like that. So, in order to become a, a subject matter expert in Penang Hokkien, I first have to learn its history. And when, in order to learn his history, of course, if you, I am you and you are me, we start with ground zero. We do not know anything about Penang Hokkien. And we will try to get information from people whom we think know better than us. Sometimes they are very reluctant to share the knowledge, which is very, very sad. And sometimes we find that the information that is passed down over the, the ages has some misinterpretation or distortion to it. And that distortion keeps on being repeated down the centuries. So in order for us to have a better understanding of Penang Hokkien, I need to do a lot of research to understand who we are. And for that, I come to a tale of three cities. That is Zhangzhou, Quanzhou, and Xiamen. And from the research, I then understand that the seat of Penang Hokkien comes from the first two cities, from, in particular from Zhangzhou. Zhangzhou and Quanzhou, in the early days, those are port cities in Fujian province. So the Hokkiens came from either of these, and after the, the Opium War, 
China was forced to open up a port for trading by with uh, Western powers, and then Xiamen came about. But for Penang Hokkien, we can trace to this uh, to Changzhou in particular. What I want to say is that the Hokkien people now today we say we speak Hokkien. We say we speak Hokkien. But Hokkien, the word Hokkien itself actually refers to Fujian province. It refers to the whole province. And so the distortion of information goes all the way to how we call ourselves. So now I'm going to show you over here. This is the map of Fujian province and Guangdong province. And down below is Hainan. And these are the places where the southern Chinese migrated all over. And the language that we speak has its seat at Changzhou. Changzhou is the one that it started all. But to say that we today speak in Penang, we speak Changzhou Hokkien is also incorrect. Because the Hokkien that we are speaking today is a, an amalgamation of many, many dialects and many, many influences all over. So, it is no longer true to say that it is uh, a Changzhou Hokkien. So, Penang Hokkien, we have to move away from thinking that this is Changzhou Hokkien. Penang Hokkien, we have to consider as unique to ourselves. But uh, coming back to why do we call it Hokkien? The whole province is Hokkien province. But within Hokkien province, not everybody is Hokkien. Going up to the capital, the capital of Hokkien province is Fuzhou. Fuzhou, they speak Hokkien. But why do we not call it Hokkien? The whole place Hokkien, or why are we not speaking Hokkien? Because the port cities are the ones that send out all the seafarers. So when the seafarers arrive all over Southeast Asia, and people ask them, oh, where are you from? Then they will say, we are Hokkien people, we come from Hokkien. So then they, be, they have claimed the name Hokkien for themselves, even though the rest of Fujian province, other languages are spoken. So if a, so a Hakka then came and also came from Fujian province and said, I am also Hokkien. But Hokkien is already claimed. Somebody has already claimed. So the, the people who have already claimed the name Hokkien for use are the ones from Changzhou and Quanzhou. Changzhou and Quanzhou, they are the port cities. It's just like Kuala Trungano and Kuantan are speaking different languages from Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Trungano and Kuantan send people all over the world, so everybody knows uh, people from Kuala Trungano and Kuantan, and when they arrive at those places, people ask them, oh, where are you from? We are from Malaysia. Later on, Kuala Lumpur people come, speak a different language from those from Kuala Trungano and Kuantan, and say, we are from Malaysia. No, 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 you cannot be from Malaysia. You have to say something else, because Malaysia is taken already. So Hokkien has already been taken by the people of Changzhou and Quanzhou claim the name as Hokkien. But the, the language itself is specific to Changzhou and Quanzhou. These two cities are just 128 kilometers apart from each other. So it's the, dif it's the distance between Georgetown and Kuala Kangsa. Yet from Georgetown to Kuala Kangsa, this distance gave birth to two variants of Hokkien. Changzhou gave birth to Penang Hokkien, whereas Quanzhou gave birth to Singapore Hokkien. So when you hear Singapore Hokkien or Klang Hokkien, the, the source is the Quanzhou Hokkien. And by all the other places, the Teochews, the Hakkas and so on, they all came from this whole region all the way down to the Hainan uh, in uh, Hainan province there. So these are the source of the Hokkien people. We come here and we want to make a new life. And today we see that our language is like on ICU and we need to do something to save it. I know we are passionate. We know that we need to do something, but how to get it done? Next slide. What's in our bookshop? It is such a sad thing. 
we can go into the bookshop, we can get books to learn English, we can get books to learn Mandarin, we can get books to learn Bahasa Melayu, we can even get books to learn German or Japanese or Spanish or French. But when it comes time to get book to properly learn Penang Hokkien, we are very limited. However, someone does do something that makes a difference and all that I'm doing today rests on his shoulder and it's Mr. Tan over there. Mr. Tan, please stand up. That is Mr. Tan Chun Ho. If you go into all the bookshops in Penang, you'll find Mr. Tan Chun Ho's books. So Mr. Tan Chun Ho is, has initiated. He initiated how to write Penang Hokkien. But we need something more sophisticated. And Mr. Tan and I, we sat for many, many hours thinking of how we can put this progress forward. We approached the publishers again. Can we redo all the books so that it follows a specific writing system? It seems to be like too expensive to do that or whatever. So the alternative is to put it online. Put everything online so that I can distribute it free of charge to everybody. So we can we don't need to look down on our language anymore. We don't need to feel that so inferior to other people. Other people's language can be written down. Our language nobody can write. No, we have to change that. So in our bookshop there are no books in Penang Hokkien that seriously covers the grammar of the language. And just now, whose language is this? If we say that this is the language solely, exclusively of the Hokkien people, then we would alienate a lot of people in Penang. So if I'm, I am Taishanese, this is not my language, so it doesn't belong to me. If I'm Teochew, this is language that does not belong to me. So we cannot take that approach. We have to consider that this is our language, this is our heritage, this is our common heritage and we are here today because our, our ancestors made the choice to go through severe hardship to be here in this wonderful, wonderful place called Penang and we can make a wonderful life together. It doesn't matter whether we are from Fujian province or Kuangtung province or Hainan province or we are from Sumatra or we are from Tamil Nadu. We are all together and we have to love this common heritage that we have and make it something that is, we can be proud of and showcase to the world. Now, to, to save the language is very easy. But how do you come up with a writing system that will encapsulate all the words? So this is uh, Madam Teo who won first prize will be able to read this. But for many of you, this might be the first time that you see this. This is Tai Chi Romanization and what I want, why I want to show this to you is this is the essence of Penang Hokkien. Penang Hokkien is not purely Hokkien. Penang Hokkien is the fusion or amalgamation of all many, many different languages. Are you able to read this? Tai Wok. Why is Ta Pokia, Tehon, Chobas Gostan, Long Matachia? Can you say how many languages can you pick up from here? There is Hon, of course. Hon is English. Bas can be English or Malay. Gostan, huh? Gostan can be English. Mata, Mata is the source is Malay, but it has been appropriated into Penang Hokkien, and now it is a Penang Hokkien word. You can't, you can't. Use a different word for this. Mata is mata. And then, Taiwan is Cantonese. And do you see any other languages? Wa. Do you know why is what language? Wa is Teochew. And Tapo. Tapo I learned is Xiamen Hokkien. So, 
it's not just Changchou Hokkien. We cannot say that it is totally Changchou Hokkien. As I researched for my dictionary, I discovered that the Hokkien language is the most diverse. Almost every city has its own pronunciation. And we have its own pronunciation because the, the language is largely a spoken language. China, and in particular, Ming, uh, Hokkien language, operates in a two-tier system. The bottom tier or the lower register is the spoken language that we use every day from way back until now. That's the spoken language. But there's also an upper tier language. The upper tier language in the past for the Hokkien people was classical Chinese. So classical Chinese was the written language, the formal language or written language for the Hokkien people all the way until the beginning part of the 20th century. But this, this written language is very exclusive. If you go back to Penang's history, go back to like the 19th century, you'll find that almost everybody is illiterate. Almost everybody is, in fact, no change from today. If I ask you, how many of you are literate in writing Hokkien? You can say that, hmm, cannot write. Ah. So it's no difference back then, also the same. Everybody is illiterate. But there is a minute percentage of people who are able to read, read Hokkien, not Penang Hokkien, read Hokkien, and they do so by reading classical Chinese. So, so they are the people such as the merchant class and the priesthood. So it's very limited to the merchant class and the priesthood who have the chance to learn. And the merchant class can have the means to bring in tutors to teach almost always the boys, teach the sons so that they can have this communication in uh, classical Chinese. And classical Chinese is a marvelous invention for the Chinese in that one, one written system can be read by different people in different provinces in their own way. That is to say, the Hokkien will read, read literary Chinese in the Hokkien pronunciation. The Cantonese will read it in the Cantonese pronunciation and so on. So, the Hokkien and the Cantonese will still be chicken and duck, cannot talk to each other, but if they are able to read, then they are able to understand each other in written form. So, this was how it was for over a thousand years until the beginning part of the 20th century when telecommunication devices start to be invented such as the radio, the telephone and then uh, film, movies and so on and it becomes necessary you, we can say that we can start to see cracks on classical Chinese classical Chinese has its limitation in that it is one system of writing, but different, different, different ways of pronouncing it. So, we have to revamp the whole thing. So, in the 20th century, China modernized its language. China modernized its language by, despite all the history attached to literary Chinese or classical Chinese, it's time to modernize and go to a new system. In the new system, it is one writing system and one pronunciation. And that one writing system and one pronunciation is modern Mandarin that is then rolled out into the whole Chinese sphere. And that is what is replacing uh, classical Chinese. And also, literacy for Chinese people start to increase after the introduction of Mandarin but at the expense of Hokkien. So, let's continue. So, for our language, there is no choice. We have learned from Mandarin. If we want to move forward, we must modernize. If we don't modernize, our language will die. We have reached a stage for Penang Hokkien where there is no choice, we have to modernize our language. And it is a good thing that we are able to modernize our language because we do not want people to look down on us that this is the language of the uneducated. So, our, we have to rebrand this language as we speak Penang Hokkien, 
Not because we are uneducated, not because we are inferior. We speak Pinang Hokkien because we love the language. We love the language because it's our heritage. So that is the reason. And for Pinang Hokkien to survive, we have to modernize it. But how to modernize it? There has been repeated attempts and attempts to modernize it. So my mission statement is to modernize Penang Hokkien for the digital age without sacrificing its heritage. I'm very clear. We we want our her heritage to stay alive, but we need to move forward. Like for example, last time uh, in the 80s we used Yahoo Group. Now we use Facebook, WhatsApp. Our computers it has progressed. In the past, we don't use mobile phones. Now we do. So everything has moved forward. If our language does not move forward, then it will eventually lose out to all the other languages. And one major area for Penang Hokkien where it is losing out is that it does not have a written form. We do not have a written form. So. To get this language moving forward, we need a written form because our society has also evolved. If we go back in time 100 years ago, 200 years ago, back then, most people are, were illiterate. It was totally fine that you do not know how to read and write. And we never expected that we will need, need to read or write in order to communicate. Most people back then will meet each other and talk face to face. But nowadays, we do not need to meet each other to talk face to face. We meet each other over Facebook. We meet each other over WhatsApp. And we communicate in written form. So if our language cannot be communicated in written form, we are totally handicapped. But in order for us to do this, we also have to understand our limitation. For sure, this language is not going to be taught in our school. So we need a way to do this that is simple and be able to help us communicate, but communicate precisely. First of all, it has to be easy to write, simple yet sophisticated. It has to be intuitive. If you don't have a chance to learn Pinay Hokkien and you look at the text, you need to, to a certain extent, know how to guess how to read it. If you can't guess, then the, the writing system has a problem. Spellings and tones has to be based on languages taught in local school. So I need to leverage on our education. Our, in our education, we learn English, Bahasa Melayu, and Mandarin. So the writing system has to be supported by these three languages. If I create something that is totally foreign, then it will be very, very difficult for people to learn. And our priority is to get as many people literate in Penang Hokkien as possible. Because we are now at a threshold where the future starts from here. So in order for us to have a future where our language is proudly showcased to the world, we need to have a proper written form. Easy to write and yet able to com convey meanings precisely. In, but in order to do that, as I said, I need to become a subject matter expert on this. So I research on all the types of written form for Hokkien all the way down from the earliest until now. And also, I researched the history of Hokkien, not just in Malaysia, but also comparing it with what has been written about Hokkien migration in Thailand, in the Philippines, in Sumatra, in Taiwan, and of course, in Fujian province to really understand it. And I've, I learned that our language is mostly monosyllable. That means most of the words are very short. When the words are very short, they have a different characteristic from languages with long words. For example, 
Bahasa Malaysia has words such such as dipertanggungjawabkan, mempersembahkan, and so on. When the words are long, sometimes it's very easy for us to get the idea from how the pattern of the words is. However, when the words are short, we are compressing it into a single syllable. And in that single syllable, we can express different meaning using tones. People have commented before that Pinay Hokkien sounds like a sing-song language. Yes, it is a sing-song language because to a certain extent, we need to understand the rhythm or the tone in order to pronounce it correctly. It's a tonal language. How we say the tone will give us different meaning. And then it has a complex tone Sunday. That means when you put different words together, the tones change. And I will show you in a short while. And it includes many loan words from surrounding languages. We need a, a writing system that can accommodate loan words from Malay, from English, from anything to put in there. If the writing system cannot accommodate loan words, then it is a faulty system. It has limitation to it. Continue. So, how to save a dying language? I know. How many of you have created a writing system for a language? Most of the time, if you say you want to learn a language, the writing system is already in place for you to learn the language. But in this case, we have a, a problem that we need to solve because our language has no writing system. So it has to start with creating the writing system. But who has the experience of creating a writing system? Almost nobody. Nobody has the experience of creating the writing system. So I'm going into uncharted territory. I have to do this, and I know this is very, very important for everybody that I do it right. So that many years from now, you will be using this and you will be using it easily because I make it easy for you to use. I make it precise for you to convey the meaning. So first thing is to modernize with a writing system and then compile an online dictionary. Without an online dictionary or without a dictionary at all. You write one way, he writes one way and what is he writing? Nobody knows because there is no dictionary. But when everything is put into a dictionary and people follow this dictionary, you know what word is being used. So a dictionary is vital. And then create learning material. If you have dictionary but you don't teach people how to, how to learn the language, still there is limitation. Yeah. We do not want to keep this language to ourselves only. It's time that we open it so that a Malay who wants to learn it can do so, an Indian who wants to learn it can do so, a Cantonese in Kuala Lumpur wants to learn Penang Hokkien because he has moved up to Penang, can do so, an expat living in Penang who is curious about our local heritage wants to learn Penang Hokkien, can do so. Everybody can learn our language and that's what we want. We do not want to limit it to ourselves because if we limit it to ourselves, we won't achieve the critical mass of saving it. Make learning easy and tools to learn easily accessible. So everything is online. Everything is online and everything is free of charge and that's the cheapest that I can go for it. So everything is online. And instill pride in our language. Yeah, I can give you everything, but the last part is belongs to you. I need your help to instill pride that I am so proud of this language. I love this language. I love our heritage. Uh, it doesn't matter that I don't, I'm not fluent in Hokkien. It doesn't matter because all of us, most of us are not fluent in Hokkien. But we can be fluent in this Creolized Hokkien, which is Penang Hokkien. And this is, the, this is the language that has been with us from the very beginning of Penang until today. And it has accumulated a lot of stories during this time, it has accumulated a culture, it has accumulated cuisine, and so on. So all this, the gel that holds this together is this language. So, in order to create a writing system for this language, I first look at what, what do we have? It's like you are going shopping now. You are shopping for a new writing system. There is Chinese characters, Church Romanization and Taiwanese Romanization, these are the existing. 
So with Chinese characters, it will be very, very challenging. And so I'm going to put this aside. Church Romanization was created by Christian missionaries at the beginning part of the 19th century when they arrived in Peninsular Malaysia and discovered to their amazement that everybody, firstly, are illiterate, okay? Understand, everybody is illiterate. But secondly, the written form is different from the spoken form of Chinese. So, the illiterate people speak one form of Hokkien, but the small group of people who are able to read and write are reading and writing in a different type of Hokkien. But actually, it's not Hokkien. They are reading and writing in classical Chinese, but they are pronouncing it in Hokkien. So it becomes that, oh, they are, uh, they are speaking in a different form of Hokkien. So the missionaries created their, the first writing system, which is church romanization. That is already 200 years ago. And then in 2008, the Taiwan government from nationalist settlements created Taiwanese romanization based on church romanization. So they take church romanization, they make some changes to it, and they call it Taiwanese romanization. It's like this. Here I want to show you an example using the word black. Black in Hokkien or Penang Hokkien is or Chinese character is like that. And here you will have to know, Hokkien and Mandarin are two different languages. They don't always use the same Chinese character. So the, the word for black in Mandarin does not use the same Chinese character as the word for black in Hokkien. And sometimes the word for black in Hokkien means something else in Mandarin. So this is one thing that you... And it can become a booby trap if you think that what you're reading is Hokkien and you read it and then you will misunderstand it. So I'm going to put aside uh, Chinese characters. The second one is church romanization. And to write all, you, read, you write an O and you put a dot on the right side. That is how you write all using church romanization. But how are you going to write this using our present day keyboard? It's going to be very, very challenging. As for Taiwanese romanization, they acknowledge that writing a dot after the O is going to be tough. So they improvised and they came up with O-O. But O-O, for us, is not going to be read as O, it's going to be read as U. So if you are going to rely on Taiwanese romanization, there is great danger that we are going to mispronounce. Learners are going to learn it wrongly because we don't pronounce the way intuitively. We need a system that we see and is intuitive to us that, yeah, this is a system that uh, I can learn with very little learning involved, with, with very little training involved. Another example, please. The word for girl, girl is jabo. Jabo is written in church romanization as this, jabo. So, again, not only it has the O, but it has that acute accent. It has the acute accent. Collectively, all the accents is called the diacritic marks. That accent, for your information, is different from Mandarin's Han Yu Pinyin. So, the Han Yu Pinyin Piet is different from the Hokkien Piet. So, you are again going to mispronounce it if you rely on church romanization. And then for Taiwanese romanization, they write it as this, Jabo. This is Jabo using Taiwanese romanization. So there is a lot of booby trap involved if we rely on this. But having said that, if you use my Penang Hokkien dictionary, all these are shown to you. That means I show you not only our own writing system, but also the legacy heritage uh, writing system, whether it's Taiwanese romanization, church romanization, or Chinese characters, because I have always promoted the acquisition of knowledge. Yeah, whether it's on Penang travel tips, where it's information on streets, but in this case, it's information on Hokkien, and you can compare. This is the first dictionary where you can do searching using English and get everything. Whether it's Chinese characters, whether the different forms of writing system involved for writing Hokkien. But this I would call as system for writing Hokkien. For Penang Hokkien, my own 
Taiji Romanization, which I invented in the year 2013, which is exactly 100, uh, well, 10 years ago, is the first homegrown system created for our language. Let's continue. Uh, quickly, this is Chao. Chao is Kia. Kia in Chinese characters. Kia in church romanization. You see, in church romanization, it's K I A and a small n. A small n. That is Kia. Kia. And this is Taiwanese romanization to write Kia. But if you are not familiar with this and you attempt to read it intuitively, you might end up with Kian. Kian. Because it's K I A N N. So that's why I feel that we have to have our own. Let's continue. Aching is Ahok's daughter. So this is in Chinese characters, this is in church romanization, and this is in Taiwanese romanization. Look at Aching here. This is how you will write Aching using church romanization, and this is how you will write Aching using Taiwanese romanization. Again, you, you, if we adopt this, we have more or less sandpapered away our heritage to accept something which is foreign to us. We don't write a thing like this. We don't write a thing with two H. We want to write a thing as, as shown here. And similarly, a hog. We, we are familiar with how we spell a hog, which is up there. And all the, all the uh, diacritic marks is going to make it very difficult to write. Because it's not our keyboard can't do this. Our keyboard can't do this. Our mobile phone cannot do this. And imagine if you learn a system where you have difficulty in writing. If you have difficulty in writing that, then you cannot communicate. You are handicapped. The, the, the system has crippled you already. And if somebody teach you that system and then you learn that system but you cannot communicate using it, what is going to happen next? He is going to be the one who feeds you the information. You are on the receiving end but you cannot use it on your own. You have lost your freedom of expression. I, I do not want that. We, I want you to be liberated. I want you to be, have the chance to use the language any which way you can on any devices available. Whether it's on mobile phone, whether it's on keyboard, and so on, every typewriter in town can type our language. That is what you want. Otherwise, we will be controlled. If I am able to broadcast in Taiwanese romanization, and, and you can read it, but you cannot type it yourself, then I have virtually controlled you. So, I can tell you whatever I want, but you cannot fight back. You cannot respond to me because you are unable to type on your keyboard. Let's continue. Are you able to read this? Ating. Ating. You can say Ating Beloti. You can say Ating Beloti. So, this is this is the problem if there is no tone. So that's why we need tone to know which, which is it. Continue, please. This is how the, 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 you use Taiwanese Hokkien, uh, to Taiwanese Romanization, a cheng be lo and a cheng be lo by putting the different marks. But if you are not able to put the marks, then it sounds the same. You, people don't know whether you are saying a cheng be lo or a cheng be lo Let's continue. Now, using Taiji Romanization, which I'm promoting to you, now you can type Aching Beloti is BEH33 and Aching Beloti is BEH1. So, that will help you differentiate and using letters and numbers, you can, you can type on anything. Any typewriter in town can type this. Let's continue. So, Aching Bebe Loti, Aching Bebe Loti. So, you listen carefully. Aching Bebe Loti, Aching Bebe Loti. If you do not uh, address the tones, you are, will have difficulty in knowing how to write it correctly. So, that's why the new writing system will allow you to write correctly and the dictionary will tell you which word to use. Let's continue. 
So, why not use uh, Chinese characters to write? Firstly, it disadvantage the non-Chinese educated, including myself, uh, because I'm from Penang Free School. We speak English. So sorry. Uh, uh, so that's why I need to, I do not want to be alienated, and I do not want anybody to be alienated from this writing system. Hard to differentiate Hokkien from Mandarin. Requires more effort to memorize pronunciation because the words doesn't come with the, the pronunciation. You have to memorize the pronunciation yourself and no historical basis. Because last time, people don't write the spoken language. The spoken language that we, we are writing now is actually something which is new. Let's continue. So, must have for a new writing system is easy to learn, instantly recognizable. We want to be different. If you look at Thai script, you know immediately that's Thai. If you look at Japanese, you know that's Japanese. If you look at Korean, you know that's Korean. So we want something that is unique to ourselves. And it's important for our heritage that we are sure of this is Penang Hokkien. This is Penang Hokkien. Let's continue. And so I introduced Taiji Romanization, which actually is 10 years from now, exactly. 2013, I started this. The with Taiji Romanization, there is no special characters or diacritic marks. So no, no all those funny, funny things. The tones are represented by numbers. Tone numbering follows uh, Mandarin tone one, two, three, four. So if you know Mandarin, ma, 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 ma. So it's one, two, three, four, and you number it. Spelling follows English and Malay, and can be typed on all devices without additional apps. Okay, let's go here. Time out. <laughs> I'm told it's time out already, so okay lah. <laughs> so, there is a lot more that I can tell you, but I, my time is up. So sorry about that. Yeah, it's very, very late. But this I will give you uh, uh, quickly. This, so this is all. So this is now how we, how we write all. This is how we write all. Uh, you continue quickly so that they can see some other examples. So this is cha bo. Cha, 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 cha. So, Tone three, bo, 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 tone four, like that. Continue? Hmm. Okay, then this is kia, 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 kia. So it's tone four, so this is how you will write kia, 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 kia. A cheng be loti, now it's written like this. And a cheng be loti is written like this. A cheng be loti. And you see that a cheng, the name spelling retains the same. The only inclusion is the tone number. The tone number is to indicate what tone to use. What tone to use for the, uh, to pronounce it. So this you can learn quite quickly. You want to go until finish? Or you want to stop somewhere? There is still? Ha, okay, lah. Uh, I think I'm going to stop here, but this will give you an idea of Penang Hokkien. And in the Penang Hokkien dictionary, you are able to see over 6,000 words and uh, that ha has been encapsulated. Uh, I think maybe you run through quickly. I want to show them the dictionary. Down, down. So this is how you search the dictionary. You can search the dictionary using Penang Hokkien. You can search the dictionary using English. You can search it using Bahasa Melayu. You can use Mandarin to search the dictionary. You can use the uh, Chinese characters, church romanization, Taiwanese romanization, a lot of different ways to search the dictionary to get what you are looking for. So this is the first ever dictionary, online dictionary for Penang Hokkien that you can search using English and Bahasa Malaysia quickly and this is how it looks like when you search for something and it comes up for example and paid you get the definition in english the definition in bahasa melayu you get the how it's written in mandarin you get how it's written in hokkien traditional chinese hokkien simplified chinese and then just now i said church romanization Taiwanese romanization, you get how it's pronounced in Mandarin, you say po for more for, and you get all, all other Chinese languages, like Cantonese, Taishanese, Hakka, Ming, uh, Hokjiu, Teochew, and so on. And if you see there is that speaker icon, means that you click on that, and then the words will come out. So you can listen to how to pronounce it in Penang Hokkien.
And so I think I will conclude here. I want to thank you very, very much again for this, for coming here. But to end, I want to encourage you to learn the writing system. I will be around to help you and help will always be free of charge. Because the most important is to let you all be the person who can learn, understand, and once you have it in, your, in you, it will stop becoming letters and numbers. It will become words. And those words will be something that might be something that you cherish. Your most beautiful moments can be encapsulated in Penang Hokkien. Okay? Thank you very much. Come see us today.